This meeting is now called to order. Roll call, please. Mrs. Cloninger? Here. Mrs. Cons? Here. Mr. Lavalley? Here. Mr. Salt? Here. Mr. Tembe? Here. And uh, Mr. Salt is driving to, I want to say Grand Junction, but I don't think that's right. Glenwood Springs, which Mr. Tembe is going to do tomorrow morning for the CASB um, Delegate Assembly. So he's he's en route to that. All right. Uh, the Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Colonel Stallworth. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, and for I believe the second meeting, uh, we are going to have our spotlights now. Uh, Rampart High School is the first one up. Uh, that is Mr. Salt, but again, because he's driving, I'm going to go ahead and read a little bit. Of, I, I see Megan over there. Um, let me start and then and then you, you'll take it over. Uh, Rampart High School in partnership with their feeder elementary and middle schools has raised over $600,000 for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society over the past 16 years through their Bald for Bucks fundraiser which I've had the pleasure of attending at least the last two years. Rampart has seven teachers who are Rampart alumni. Rampart has about 60% choice enrollment. It has the best view of Pikes Peak in the school district. Uh, I, she's got a pretty good one too from her office, just saying, but, uh, you know, but she's not a school, that's right. She's a superintendent, but please welcome Principal Megan Sanders. All right, good evening. I would like to welcome, we're going to spotlight tonight, the Rampart Journalism programs at Rampart High School, which is KRAM, our broadcasting program, and RAM Pages, which is our yearbook program. So I'm going to ask all of my friends to come up here and stand with me. I know. All right, so if you can go to the next slide. The first person I want to start with is our advisors. And the first advisor I have is Mr. Patrick Mooring. There we are. <laughs> Mr. Mooring is in his 16th year of teaching at Rampart High School. He was originally hired to teach English and had one section of KRAM. And over years of popularity has grown it into a full CTE broadcasting program um, pathway with KRAM, sports broadcasting, and IB film. He's a two-time Rampart Teacher of the Year and CMSA President, 2019 Journalism Education Educators Association Special Recognition Broadcast Advisor, 2021 JEA Distinguished Broadcast Advisor, and the 2022 JEA National High School Broadcast Teacher of the Year. Um, so he has been doing incredible work with our students, which they are going to get to highlight here in just a minute. So I want to welcome and congratulate Patrick Mooring on all of his years of service. Next, I want to welcome Mrs. Lexi Bailey, who is our yearbook advisor. You can go to the next slide. Oh, I do. Okay. All right. Mrs. Bailey is in her fifth year of teaching at Rampart High School. She is a 2011 Rampart High School graduate, so one of our alumni who is a teacher at Rampart High School. She teaches yearbook journalism, creative writing, and is our student council advisor. She is also the 2023 Janet Asbury Secondary Educator of the Year for Academy District 20. And this year was recognized as the JEA Rising Star Award. So welcome, Mrs. Bailey, and congratulations. <laughs> okay, so next I have our students. Um, we have two KRAM students that are going to speak with you tonight and share a little bit of some of their segments in which they have been nationally recognized. So the first one up is Maddie Spooner. Okay. This is a segment that I did on um, our drafting class at Rampart. So they make things and kind of like an architectural class at Rampart. I thought it'd be interesting to highlight them because they don't get a lot of recognition. And this is the piece that I took to nationals with us last year in San Francisco and I got a an excellent an excellence award an excellence rating oh, that's 
2023, you may know about the drafting class that Rampart offers to students. But did you know that this semester, Rams are doing something a little different? Students are designing and building their own bridges using their knowledge of architecture. KRAM decided to dig a little bit deeper on what this entails. Bridge building is a project we do in drafting where we completely construct a bridge um, made out of small little sticks of wood and we have to later test the bridge to see how much weight it'll hold. We basically just get pieces of balsa wood and we glue them together into a, a bridge. It's a design competition that for the state where there's a set of parameters that all the students have to build their bridge to and then what we do is they build the bridges out of wood and then we have a machine that tests them and crushes them and sees how much weight their bridges can hold. When creating these bridges, students have a detailed thought process that goes into it. Things such as stability, complexity, and overall designs are all factors when building these bridges. Uh, the design of my bridge mainly is just built to hold as much weight as possible. I used a lot of truss in my bridge, just so that it distributes the weight evenly. Uh, I looked up on Google and then I asked the teacher if it was good enough and she said yeah. So. Yesterday, after students broke their bridges, they then calculated the efficiency of their bridge. This way, they could figure out what they can improve on for next time. I think they've learned a lot of different skills. They've learned obviously how to design something and then they have to take that design, they have to build it out of wood, so they had to learn woodworking skills, how to hold things together, how to cut your pieces right and glue them. And then some of the students had some things fail that they had to work on and fix. So then that's problem solving. Before the bridge breaking, students predicted how much they believe their bridge would be able to hold. Probably not a lot. I'm guessing like 50 pounds. It's, it's, it's a stable bridge, like it's compact and it's heavy, but I feel like I didn't glue it properly enough to hold enough weight type of thing. So hopefully it holds a lot, but I don't think so. We wish you luck on all of your future endeavors in the drafting class, Rams. This has been Maddie Spooner reporting for Kate Ram. Thank you. Um, KRAM is a really great program at Rampart High School. Uh, personally and as a group, we've all won a pretty, pretty large sum of things. <laughs> uh, I've been in KRAM for four years and I've been a head editor for three, so I've kind of taken a leadership role in the class. Um, this year, Gavin and I both plan on going to nationals. There he is. Gavin and I both plan on going to nationals again. Um, yeah, KRAM is just a really awesome program and it's inspired me to major in broadcast journalism in college and pursue it as a career. Next, we have Gavin Carter. The piece I'd like to share with you all today is from our annual Bald for Bucks. Uh, as many of you may know, every year during Bald for Bucks, uh, the, we choose one hero family uh, from a child with cancer and Ball for Bucks is all about supporting them and other victims and other people whose cancer has affected their lives. And this is a piece that I made to highlight the struggles and the journey and the support that Ramparts and other District 20 schools have shown for our uh, hero child Keenan and his family. Every year, Ball for Bucks supports a hero child with cancer and their family. Keenan Rodriguez was diagnosed with leukemia in June of 2020 and Rampart has been showing their support throughout the family's hard situation. It's been a roller coaster ever since we would go to every appointment. First, it was every other week. After that, it kept getting better and better. It was kind of hard because Keenan was going to appointments every every week. To me personally, Bald for Bucks is a chance to make a difference in the fight for cancer. The benefits of having a hero family is that it allows us to put a human story behind Bald for Bucks so that we know why we're doing what we're doing. We took it as a blessing. It's pretty awesome that the school, the district does this for you know kids fighting cancer. So when we were told that Keenan was chosen as the, the hero kid of this year, we were happy, thankful, and excited. Keenan entered remission and ended treatment last September. Going through cancer is never easy, and throughout Keenan's treatment and owning a restaurant, his family has remained strong. 
Oh, it's been hard. It's been difficult, especially spending a lot of time with the kids, especially with work as well. It was sad. I kind of knew what leukemia was, but I didn't really get how bad it was. He's very strong and very resilient. To see a child go through cancer, it's sad and hard, especially when it's your own. We were shocked. We weren't expecting that. We were tough enough to handle this situation. Bald for Bucks brings the Rampart community together to show their support for all who battle cancer. Bald for Bucks stretches far beyond our halls, and the Hero family extends their gratitude for all who participate. It's something that's real, and it makes a difference in the lives of the people that we're trying to help. We get to know their names. We get to know their stories and to uh, try to make a difference in not just their lives, but the lives of everybody that has a cancer story. Thank you, Rampart. It means so much to us. We, are, we really appreciate you guys. To have something like this is amazing. Not just my son, but for the community. So we're, we're thankful, we're full of gratitude for it. You guys are awesome. I hope that you guys continue to do this for many years. One person, one school, one community can make a difference. If you're interested in being a part of something bigger than yourselves, if you're interested in making a difference in the fight of cancer, uh, consider joining us for Bald for Bucks this year. If you'd like to show your support by shaving or cutting your hair, or even just to make a donation, talk to Mr. Anderson in room 304. This has been Gavin Carter reporting for KRAM. Thank you, Len Carter. Thank you. Uh, that piece was uh, the one that I submitted for the national conference in April, and it received number four in the nation for broadcast feature story, I believe. Uh, and I couldn't be more grateful and more happy to work with KRAM. It's an amazing group. Uh, myself and Maddie are both head editors, which is a group of about 20 students in the program. Uh, and we just kind of lead the creation of projects. And it's just an amazing group. And I couldn't be more grateful to be a part of it. Thank you. Okay, next we have two students from our yearbook class. Um, we have Jasmine Jamison and McKenna Cherry. So they're going to come up and just say a quick thing. If you can go to the next, well, oh, that's me. Next slide. Okay, so, so I'm Jasmine Jamison. I've been in yearbook for like almost two years now, last year, and then also this year. I'm just a staffer, but like it's just such a good community. Like, I just have become so much more involved with the school like since I've been in yearbook like I meet all these new teachers I talk to so many more students and it's just really amazing I love it hi my name is McKenna Cherry and I just want to say I joined yearbook because I wanted to be part of like a community and I wasn't really part of anything at Rampart and so when I joined yearbook I just met all these amazing people and they really just became my family um, and I loved it so much that I went a second year. This is now my second year joining, and I wanted to be senior editor, which means I do all the um, senior photos and baby ads and stuff. Um, so what's on the screen is a couple of the spreads we did last year. Um, on the top right-hand corner is the cover we did. It's called, Is This Really Happening? And it was really based around um, our senior editors last year and their, um, uh, their experience being seniors and everything like that. And then... In the center there with the two heads going together, there's the ball for bucks. And we have a whole bunch of like um, highlights um, and shoe spreads and just things that we think what students would enjoy. Okay, as we shared, um, they have won a ton of awards. So I'm going to read these off. And these are just from like the last year. Um, so KRAM is a six-time top 10 finish in the NSPA best of show in the last eight years. In 2022, they placed first place in the nation, and in 2023, they placed fifth. Eight-time CSMA, which is the Colorado um, Association, first place best of show finish in the last 10 years. CSMA, eight-time All-Colorado winner in the last 10 years, and All-Colorado winners are the highest award that you can receive. CSMA All Colorado Hall of Fame inductee in 2021, and they are the first program in the state to have a curricular sports broadcasting class who truly goes to everything. I think Mr. Mooring works nine nights a week and um, attends 85 events a week covering sports broadcasting, and they are the most decorated and award-winning student broadcast journalism program in the state history of CSMA and most 
highly decorated Colorado program at the national level. <clears throat> and your book, um, just under the direction of Miss Bailey, is the 2023 CSMA. She has 15 awards, five first place awards, five second place awards, one third place, and four honorable mentions. They have received the All Colorado Recognition for your book, again, the highest rating in the last two years. She has a 2023 JEA. Um, two students who received an honorable mention at the national level. And in 2022, Colorado Journalist of the Year runner-up for her editor-in-chief. So one of her um, senior students was the runner-up for Journalist of the Year. And she, in the last two years, their program has been in the Walsworth Gallery of Excellence. So congratulations to them. And I just want to say they make us so proud and highlight the great things that are Rampart and we are so grateful for their work and for our students. This is really student led programs. Um, they work extremely hard and we are so grateful for everything you do and the proud work that you make Rampart. Thank you. Ms. Kalanichar. Oh, yeah, you guys. I was just yeah. going to say, can you guys all stand up here and we're going to come around front and, and hand you a little token of our appreciation, but also shake your hand. Thank you, Rampart High School. OK, board, from now on, I think that's the way we ought to do it. Have them stand up and then we walk by I them. Agree. It just seems to be a cleaner way of doing it. So next, Challenger Middle School, Ms. Cons. Thank you. So tonight, Challenger Middle School's eighth grade football players are playing their last middle school football game, and it's under the lights at the D20 Stadium. This is a great group of students who have not been scored on in the two years they've been playing at Challenger. Also, one of the classes spotlighted tonight is new to Challenger this year. Challenger is currently rebuilding their CTE, Career and Technical Education programs, and both of the teachers here tonight are a key part of bringing CTE back to Challenger Middle School. So I'd like you all to please welcome Principal Debbie Holt and teachers Philip Lloyd and Lisa, is it Crydell? Oh, okay, Lisa Crydell, come on up. I'm Lisa and I teach um, the video announcements and digital storytelling at Challenger. You have to go right up to the mic, sorry. Okay. Um, and like you said, we are just rebuilding our CTE program. So this is our first year kind of doing these things. And, you know, what an act to follow and inspiration for the things that, you know, our kids can, will hopefully go on to do. Um, and so what I focus in my class, what uh, my student Shiloh Harrison will be presenting are, is an animation. So we do work in Creative Cloud. And so the first thing that he'll show is kind of uh, After Effects and um, Premiere Pro. And then he's also doing some animation on his own in Animator. So that's what he'll be showing when he comes up. And this is Mr. Lloyd. <laughs> Hello, my name is Philip Lloyd. I'm uh, new to the district, new to Colorado Springs. Oh, okay, so, <laughs> but I am my uh, CTE teacher in my heart and I'm happy for the opportunity to create and help create this program at Challenger so that we can produce students that will have a running head start when they go to schools like Rampart to create even better stuff. One of the students that we brought up, I don't know, we're supposed to be having a slide right now running 
of some of the things that we've done in our middle school, they have the. Right I think they're working on it. Okay. Okay, you want to do that? Okay. So, um, yes. Shiloh, do you want to come up here? And this is this is Shiloh Harrison. He's in the eighth grade digital story cl telling class. Hello, my name is Shiloh Harrison, and uh, I am in uh, Miss Crydell's digital storytelling class. And um, uh, in this class, we do Adobe, we um, learn Premiere Pro, uh, After Effects, and I've been learning um, Adobe Animate on my own time. So uh, I have a little animation uh, that I made in Adobe After Effects. Um, that was kind of meant to be a like comedic version of the full one. Um, and Miss Crydell, uh, my teacher, she actually taught me a lot about how, how to animate in After Effects, how to do Premiere Pro, and it's been really helpful in editing and actually making this stuff work. So uh, yeah, this is my animation. Uh, there's supposed to be sound, but... Go, go, be gone. Don't do it. Ha ha, no. <laughs> pause on that thanks for stopping by so, so um uh this animation was made in adobe animate uh it's my first ever animation in adobe animate um so it's still unfinished right now uh so there's going to be parts in it where there is an audio or missing sound effects um but uh yeah it's a work in progress anyways this is my first animation uh and but i think i did pretty well I tried my best, and uh, Ms. Crydell helped me with Premiere Pro, which I'll be using in the final version. So if you could play the animation. Stopping by. Hey, Sonos. Wait, what's that? Behold, Gobo be gone. Supposedly it gets rid of Gobo. Yeah, this is whenever there's no audio. Exactly. That's why I'm gonna use it on you. I spent all my solo rum on this, so I'm not gonna let it go to waste. So, this is unfinished. <laughs> um, if you could press pause. Uh, right there. So, this is the um, actual software that I'm working in. Uh, so, as you can see on the bottom of it, there are a lot of layers, and that kind of helps me organize all of the different parts of the animation. and. Uh, like what the parts are doing and um, I have to draw the backgrounds and draw the uh, characters and then whenever I'm done with my animation I can export it and put it into Premiere Pro which I edit it and make the final version with sound effects and audio stuff like that um, so uh, I kind of lost my train of thought um, Miss Crydell uh, she teaches me Premiere Pro, so <laughs> uh, I lost my train of thought. Can I just kind of yeah, okay. I don't actually even teach animate in my class. We use Character Animator, which does a lot of the animations preset for them. So Shiloh has actually gone above and beyond to learn this on his own and to start creating his story that he wants to tell. So very proud of him. Also, uh, for the backgrounds, I am not very good with creating uh, like perspective. 
So what I had to do for the actual backgrounds was I had to create a 3D model of them first, and then I just traced over it, um, which was pretty helpful for me since I would, it would probably look a lot worse if I didn't use a 3D model. <laughs> so, yeah. He's a middle schooler, so I think that's really phenomenal that the middle school students are picking this up. I think we're running now. This is our presentation. What we did with our students, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, they created illustrated books. Well, seventh and eighth grade did. Illustrated books with the intent of reading them to the middle, our elementary school feeder schools. So we couldn't give you the whole book. But what we did was we have the covers of the books so that you can see what the work that the students did. They worked in Adobe Express, but they also used the new anim, uh, AI program, Animator. So all of the images that they have, they created using the AI Animator, which is really phenomenal for them. And I don't know, do we just run it? Okay. I didn't know I would be doing this. Okay, and again, all of the images were created by the students using um, the program. The advantage of that is that all of the books that they make are theirs now. We don't have to worry about copyright or anything like that. These are their creations. They will get better. This is the first time we introduced them to this. But the other thing that we're trying to do is make sure, and you'll see that there are different things because it's about the students, right? It's about what they want to know and what they're interested in, and that makes them motivated to do some things. And some of these books were really, really good. And there's our rocking dinosaurs. Yes. For some reason, uh, Challenger, a lot of the students love hot dogs. <laughs> and so we have, uh, and I could tell you a lot about these, but now we'll just go through it because I want you to talk to Ethan because Ethan is a new student in the class. And again, this is a program that we just started. So he needs to tell you about what he thinks about the program and where he thinks it can take him. So after I finish this, I'm gonna give you Ethan. All right, these were IM poems, visual poems, students telling us where they're from, describing themselves in a poem uh, with images. And I had to put Texas in there because I'm from El Paso. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> and can these be emailed to the board so that we can see these? Yes, ma'am. Yes. And this is a new one, and we just put some of these things in here again. These are sixth grade students giving us. Uh, images and posters describing themselves, who they are. And I'll let you read this one because this is really good and Aspen is very, very good at what she does. Um, hi, my name is Ethan Turner and I have joined the mixed multimedia class at Challenger Middle School. Sorry. Um, I really enjoy this class because it has allowed me to flourish in using my imagination to create stories that um, I am very much interested in. Like recently with the illustrated book, it required us to communicate with the AI to create the images that we wanted. And um, that was really cool to experiment with the different images that it was allowed that you could get from it. Um, my story personally was about teenagers uh, overcoming their fears against ghosts to help them defeat and save the day. Um, and I really, I really liked being able to use my imagination, just flourish with this story and being able to express myself through these stories that we've been able to create. Um, another project that we created was um, the Adobe uh, mini story, which was, um, really helpful to, exper to experiment with Adobe Express and create um, a story with the tools that it offered to us. Um, one of the tools was uh, a character um, animation that you could create using your voice and 
it would track your movements so that you could move the character around and use it to tell your story. Um, and I really loved these tools because it was it made it so much more fun to create a story that I wanted to talk about. Before you all sit down, if you guys could come up front, we'd like to shake your hands. You all are welcome to stay, but you are also welcome. I oh, know that they're coming later. You're also welcome to get up and leave. It's OK. Don't feel we, we promise it happens every week. Uh, our feelings don't get hurt. <laughs> Thank you again. It was great. Both both schools. Ms. Batson, Ms. Matson Bonet, are there any updates to the agenda? There were updates to the agenda and the board was notified of these. Members of the board, are there any items you wish to move from the consent agenda? Any items to be added to the agenda? May we have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Mrs. Cloninger? Aye. Mrs. Cons? Aye. Mr. Lavalley? Aye. Mr. Salt? Aye. Mr. Temby? Aye. Board quote, Colonel Stallworth. Yeah, let me first say that was an impressive group of young folks. I, I, uh, that, that's pretty, that's pretty amazing. Uh, and from a military perspective, I'll, I'll tell you, um, that's exactly the type of talent that we look for individuals. And that's what gives us really our competitive advantage over our adversaries, right? Young people uh, with technical prowess, um, with imagination and with, uh, the ability to express themselves is really, really phenomenal. I'm so glad to see that, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, there that's being flourished here in, in this school district. So that's, I, I wanted to give kudos to y'all for that first. Uh, my quote, a genuine leader is not a searcher of consensus, but a molder of consensus, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. If you wait to find consensus, you're not leading anyone. Leaders do not figure out where everyone is going and then jump in front. They develop ideas, convince others of their merit, chart a clear path, and guide others to press forward. They lead from the front, consistently scanning for potential dangers while calculating risk and encouraging the masses to go further than they ever thought possible, often over, around, or through significant obstacles. They are rooted in the soil of principle and not the sand of popular opinion. They lead through conviction, even if it means challenging the norm. This type of leadership is needed in all areas of our society now more than ever. And the challenge is the challenge is ours alone to accept. We need to ensure that our educational system is primed to grow these types of consensus molders and lead the next generation. Thank you, Colonel Stallworth. That was awesome. All right, board comments. Ms. Cons. Thanks, Mr. Lavalley. Um, I want to give a uh, big thanks to the community for supporting all of our schools, uh, elementary schools fun runs. There's been a lot going on uh, this week, last week, and I mean, there's goals between 20,000 to 45,000 I've seen for each school's fun run. And it's just uh, such a blessing for our district and for each of these schools to uh, receive that money and put it uh, right back to the classrooms and the kids and the program. So. Thank you to everyone and of course all the staff for 
mostly PE teachers probably putting all those together. <laughs> Always a fun time. Um, and then they're all gone, but to echo what you said, uh, Rampart and uh, Challenger. It's always really exciting to see these CTE programs coming about and flourishing in our in our district and uh, really thrilled that they are learning this stuff. I mean, I've I've wished I had access to Adobe Pro and all this stuff for years. So I'm so excited that our students get to gain those very valuable skills. So glad they came. And I just want to show off a little bit if it's going to come up here. Do I do the bottom button to start? Yeah, I tried. We'll get there. I was over at Encompass Heights last week. Drum roll. There we go. OK, so um, Encompass Heights is not the only school. I know Mountain View Elementary does this as well in our district. There may be others, but this gentleman on the left, Tom Walker, works for Lockheed Martin, and he gets uh, these rocket kits for our students um, as a grant, as a gift to our kiddos. Um, they come out and help them build the rockets. And then a week later, they get Colorado Springs. Um, we'll see a picture of it. I can't remember their whole name. Uh, I think it's just Cause Rocks, Colorado Springs Rockets Group. Um, and launch them for the kids. The whole school came out and watched. And of course, the wind picked up. The second we started, and I was about ready to dive over the kids because some of those rockets land pretty heavy. <laughs> so they had to pause, adjust them all, and then we were all good. Um, and then Paige Krause uh, here on the right is the STEM teacher at Encompass Heights who uh, gets all of this going and gets to expose the kids to all these wonderful programs. So there's some of the guys getting ready to load their rockets on the launchers. They, the gentleman who ran this, who run this group, uh, told me the launcher is 30 years old, but it is still working, prime condition. So you can see a little bit of that fun engineering there. <laughs> so I think they had about 40 launchers. I had never seen rockets launch like this. When I was in school, I feel like we just put them on the ground. So this is amazing. The electrical uh, wiring all the way up to the launcher. Oh, I never gave you guys the video. I wish I wish you could have heard the kids cheers. After 100 rockets, the cheers were never any less by the rest of the school. It was just really thrilling that they were excited the whole time. So there's a, a launch right there. Each kiddo got to push that button. And I think that's it. So just uh, really excited that uh, our elementary school kiddos get to experience this fun stuff. Thank you. Mr. Temby. Don't we have an incredible school district? <laughs> it's just it's just amazing. Uh, that was a great spotlight uh, too. Uh, my daughter actually took that sports broadcasting class with uh, Mr. Mooring and she had a blast. She was interviewing players, uh, doing video. She did every aspect of it and just had a uh, really a fun time. Uh, she's a pre-med major, but she didn't never went into uh, sports broadcasting, but she had a blast uh, in that class. Um, on September 28th, and I know that um, our superintendent will probably share this. Uh, um, we had a fabulous lunch hosted by Pikes Peak United Way, where they brought in some community leaders, uh, some of their board members or whatever. And it was just illustrative of um, uh, our superintendents reach out to this community. Uh, and embracing partnerships and collaboration, uh, but it was a great lunch. You did an exceptional job of presenting and engaging the group um, and uh, was uh, very proud of the district that day. Uh, and thanks for Allison and your uh, assistance in making that happen. Um, but uh, Pikes Peak United Way uh, is thrilled to see D20 in the community. And I'm not sure if you've shared it uh, in previous comments, uh, but our superintendent will be joining the Pikes Peak Workforce uh, Development Board, a board I chaired uh, a few years ago, and uh, it needs the K through 12 voice, and it definitely needs our voice. So I'm so thrilled that you're doing all this stuff. Um, and uh, that same day, uh, it's a kudo evening. Um, we had a presentation at Discovery Canyon 
that uh, Mrs. Cloninger uh, and I attended, uh, and it was the district presentation put on uh, by Ms. Allen. Uh, and uh, uh, Ms. Cortez was there for moral support, um, but we really have a gift in Mrs. Allen. Um, this uh, was a very objective presentation about the Mill Levy override, uh, but you just do such a phenomenal job of conveying somewhat difficult material in layperson language with uh, with uh, great professionalism. And so really want to thank you, Ms. Allen, for representing us so well in the community. Um, Ms. Cloninger, Cloninger and I uh, attended a student forum. I'm looking at the proud mother of one of the students right in front of us uh, at uh, Chinook Trail Middle School uh, in uh, conjunction with Pine Creek High School. And the students did a phenomenal job. They really did. It was well run. The questions were excellent. Um, and uh, the, the decorum was excellent last night. So I just want to uh, thank Chinook Trail, uh, Pine Creek, and the, our students. Again, great things are happening in D20. And last night was a reflection of that. And then as Mr. Lavalley mentioned, I'll be joining Mr. Salt at the uh, Colorado Association of School Boards uh, Fall Conference and Delegate Assembly. Uh, Mr. Salt is our uh, each district, there's 178 in the state, has a delegate, uh, and Mr. Salt uh, represents our district uh, as members of CASB, and I served on the CASB Bylaws Review Task Force, which was about a year-long activity uh, that we just concluded, and we'll be presenting at noon tomorrow, so uh, I'll be heading up there tomorrow. So, and that's all I have. Ms. Cloninger. Well, I have gone the route of homecomings. <laughs> and at this point, I'm four for five, and the fifth one is in a couple of weeks, I believe, for Rampart. Um, this is homecoming dance and and game. So I've, I've gone to several for, like I said, um, Liberty High School, let's see here, Discovery Canyon with all of their, um, uh, royalty, and this is a little bit out of order, but that's okay. Um, you'll see I, I, I um, tattooed uh, Mrs. Stallworth up at there, uh, Stallworth, um, Sullivan, sorry. <laughs> You're like, wait, what? <laughs> Mrs. Sullivan at the Air Academy game um, up at the top. She um, and Colonel, Sol uh, Colonel Sullivan were there um, cheering on their son. And uh, it was a great time by all. So uh, you can see the staff even gets into the into the decorating themselves. It was very fun, and I got to see uh, Superintendent Haber there with some of our teachers and and um, people who work for us here in the district. Uh, Rampart football game. I was actually there to see the band, <laughs> but I but I caught a couple of um, familiar faces in the crowd and. And it was a lot of fun to go and see that. And I'm super excited for the marching bands coming up because they have just incredible shows. So it was really fun to watch. These guys have a um, Beatles genre and it's very cool. So it, it's very fun. Um, and then I kind of going backwards um, after our last board meeting, um, Superintendent Haberer and Mr. Doug Lundberg and I all got to go to see Mamma Mia, and those of you familiar with the the soundtrack, I have had uh, ABBA playing through my head for <laughs> the last couple of weeks. I kind of um, am trying to shed myself of that because it's getting stuck there. Um, I also stopped by, I had something to drop off at Chinook Trail Middle School, and I went into this classroom. It's a seventh grade math classroom, and these were just some cute faces that were familiar to me. Um, and I have to say, this teacher was teaching um, just kind of about angles and things like that. But one of the things that I really appreciated was that some of the kids in the classroom were going way above and beyond what they were being asked. He had, one of the kids had come up with the Pythagorean theory and was talking about it and being able to describe it. And she was like, whoa, 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 whoa. We're not quite to that place, but I'm glad that you're <laughs> headed down that route. 
And when we look at our scores and we look at our, our numbers and things and we think, you know, math is an area that we have to improve on, we have a lot of good people in place and a lot of good things happening. So I just wanted to throw that out there as a little hopeful um, reminder that we have people that will be able to follow Becky's, uh, uh, Miss Allen's um, uh, buckets when they get to that age. <laughs> and then speaking of Ms. Allen, I um, got to run into her and her cute little guy. <laughs> she didn't know I was going to do this, but randomly ran into them out and about. So I thought it was kind of fun to see uh, them out in the town. Anyway, that's all the pictures I have. But I, I also wanted to just say thank you to the students who um, so eloquently um, did the or led the um, forum last night. I thought their um, their decorum, like Mr. Temby just said, was impeccable. I wish that the whole night had been that way, um, but I am grateful to them and their abilities to speak. Um, we have a great generation of students coming up um, to be our new leaders. Um, I have been like I like I've seen out and about during the um, couple of weeks between bo board meetings and uh, just seeing the good things that are happening in our school. I just feel like there's a lot of things that we hear that's negative and those things we need to work on, but we do have such good things happening. So I just I, I will say Superintendent Haber, when I'm out and about and we're talking about things, I think the leadership that you've shown in the short few months that you've been here has been one thing that has been um, just a, a, a super um, incredible way for me to walk in as a board member and and just say how much you've been doing and, and the collaboration between United Way and different um, avenues of you know community involvement. Those have all been seen by your by your staff and your people that are out in the schools and it is commendable. So I just wanted to say thank you for being an incredible leader. So thank you. Mr. Salt. Yes, thank you. I also wanted to echo what uh, Mr. Kimby Ms. Conjure talked about the forum from last night. I thought the student from Pine Creek did an excellent job. Uh, the community came in. The rules were to hold your applause between questions uh, or between answers, and actually the community did a great job following the instructions. So I was very appreciative of everyone there, um, kind of following the rules. I appreciated the students. The questions they asked were uh, very well written, uh, thought out questions. So I was really impressed with the way the entire uh, forum was run. It was fun to catch up with a couple uh, former board members here. Uh, Ms. Bullock, Mr. Lundberg, and Mr. Streep were all there in attendance. So it was great to catch up with them and see how they were all doing. Also, so my thunder a little bit. I was going to talk about Ms. Haber and just the wonderful reception she is getting from the community. I have not spoken to a teacher, an administrator, a parent, a political leader, anyone in the community who has met her that hasn't said she's just incredible. And so this is us patting ourselves on the backboard for saying we did a good job choosing the superintendent, but she is representing us really well. So Ms. Haber, I appreciate what you're doing for our district just in the short time that you've been here. The last thing that I wanted to mention was, and we'll prove this momentarily on the consent, but we're proving the updated DAC membership for the upcoming year. And so I just want to take a moment to thank all of the parents and uh, staff who, have, who are volunteering their time to sit on this board, um, on this committee, and help with the district. Uh, I know we've talked about this before, but there's a lot of really hard work that goes on. So just wanted to thank everyone who has stepped up and raised their hand to volunteer. That's all that I have. Thank you. Colonel Stallworth. No, no comments here. Just thank you. I wanted to uh, um, just say one uh, thing, if I could, about the 10th and the 12th of October, just to let everybody know. So our security forces posture is going to kind of change a little bit. We're going to do a traffic study there on the Air Force Academy 
uh, with with the amount of traffic that we've got kind of going through the gate. And so what that means to the masses, <clears throat> excuse me, is that you can expect longer wait times on those two particular days. You're heading into Air, Force, uh, Air Academy and or Douglas Valley. So if you need to get your kids there, you know, on time, recommend you get leave probably about 30 minutes or so sooner than you normally would for your uh, for your standard kind of basic uh, visits. So thanks. So that's exactly the kind of thing why we run this board. So I appreciate those comments. Uh, yeah, Mr. Uh, Temby. I didn't realize he had slipped in, but uh, Tom Andrew, the principal of Chi uh, Chinook Trail Middle School is here. So Tom, thank you for hosting last night uh, and the students did a fabulous job. But thanks to the, the staff for hosting it last night. So. I, uh, I got to had a nice visit at Pioneer Elementary uh, a little over a week ago. They had an awards presentation at the do once in a while and it's real fun. They have the gauntlet. Yeah, they, they have the kids in the back that they get the award in the gym and there was a bunch of parents there and they all run through the center when their name is called and and it's like this. It's just a huge deal and they get to run up and shake hands and get a certificate. It was really fun. So it was uh, it was especially, you know, sort of a hey, their peers make the the tunnel if you will and so it's just a really neat thing that i got i got to see a pioneer and then i also went to mama me i went to the matinee on saturday i think you guys went to the evening one on saturday that's funny after i bought the tickets i was like oh wait a minute cu's 2-0 and and they're playing oregon oh i i'm sorry i i'm gonna miss the game well as it turns out i didn't miss a darn thing so it was actually good but uh i just wanted to thank um um Amy Keating, uh, who's the theater director there at DCC. They, the budding thespians did a great job. It was a lot of fun. And like you said, I've always, don't tell anybody, but I've always liked ABBA music. Uh, in addition to rock and roll, I still like ABBA. I know it's a word combination, but uh, yeah, I know. But I thought they did a great job. And um, I actually had two fun runs I was going to attend. I was going to attend the luncheon last week. And, and unfortunately I had a, had a little uh, collision with the ground. Um, collapsed the lung, spent four days in the hospital last week. So I, I, I missed a lot of things, but I'm, I'm feeling pretty good now. And uh, so hopefully I get back, back in the saddle here uh, shortly. So, uh, and, and it was, uh, I just wanted to thank uh, the Rampart folks, you know, KRAM is, um, they, they just have a, a great reputation. I mean, their name is always popping up. Anytime we do anything, is KRAM gonna be there? And they just do, do super work. So um, without further ado, superintendent uh, comments, superintendent Haber. Yes, and I'll take the little clicker. I just want to start out and say thank you so much for um, your positive feedback. It really means a lot to me and I appreciate it. Uh, I also want to acknowledge my cabinet members. Um, they are, abs I have an absolutely amazing team and uh, our theme has been team one and I've just appreciated all of them and uh, just the way that we're working together to have such a successful start of the year. So thank you, uh, my amazing cabinet members. So I'm just gonna advance really quick if I, let me try this, because we have some, um, amazing partners here in the room and I want to start with them. So we have our Chinook Trail Middle School folks here and uh, I just really appreciate uh, Jackie Lesh that you reached out to me to tell me about this great award that you just won. So I'd like for um, the following folks if you wouldn't mind going to the podium and Jackie I'd love for you to share out a little bit more about this award. Uh, really congratulations to Chinook Trail Middle School uh, for their winning the PTSA uh, National PTSA School of Excellence Award. Uh, they're only they're one of only two PTAs in El Paso County uh, and one of only eight schools to have won in the state of Colorado. Uh, and really thank you to our Chinook Trail uh, PTSA just for volunteering your time and just creating that culture of excellence and overall well-being for our students. And I know tonight we have our uh, PTSA president, Aaron Stevens, uh, Vice President Samantha Carter, and our principal, uh, Tom Andrews. And certainly our El Paso County PTA president, Jackie Lesh. So Jackie. Thank you. Um, as the El Paso Council PTA president, I wanted to be here to congratulate them in person. Like you said, it's a really prestigious award only um, 
368 schools in the nation have won wow. this, this for this year. And like you said, there was only eight in Colorado and two in our county. Um, the other one was in District 11. Let you know, but um, I do want to say the Chinook Trail Middle School PTSA, um, they started five years ago when the school opened and they have such a great partnership with Mr. Um, Andrew, with the staff, with the admin. They really do work together as a community to do anything they can to help support our students and staff over there. Um, in order to win this award, you have to show that you've done something to help your community or your school in some way. And Chinook Trail Middle School, like a lot of schools in our district, they have some trouble with the parents when it comes time for pick up and drop off. And so the school decided that one of the things that they wanted to focus on last year was how can we create more safe environment for our students and our parents and our staff at pick up and drop off times. So they actually enlisted the help of our students in our digital media classes and they created these really fun tug in cheek kind of videos where it's amazing how the students know exactly where their parents should park and where not to turn left and and where the students should be on the sidewalk, even though the parents don't seem to quite have caught on to maybe the the patterns that they should be following. So the students created all these um, really fun videos that we released out to our community there in Cordera and to the difference, the two schools in the area and the parents and just letting them know, hey, you know, if you're unsure of the patterns, ask your students because we've gone through with them and they really do understand. So they did a great job making these videos and that was one of the reasons why they won the award. And then I did bring the banner tonight that they get to hang up in the school and then the certificate for them that just says that they are National School of Excellence Award winner. Is it okay if I present the banner? Yes, that would be great. And board, if you wouldn't mind getting up front, we can pre present presentation of the banner and take some photos. This side. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a picture. All right, so I'm gonna just kind of scroll back here real quick. Nobody look, you'll get kind of sick here. All right, so um, two weeks ago, uh, I had a chance and thank you to Allison for getting us signed up for this. We had uh, Dr. Jim Smith and Allison Cortez and I went to the Colorado Springs Downtown Partnership Breakfast and there we had nearly a thousand uh, other business and school and nonprofit leaders there. Uh, not only did we learn about the growth of our city center, but really I was able to connect to several community leaders, uh, several D20 parents, which is really great to uh, meet and connect with them, and many of our constituents. And, you know, really the best part is uh, just how excited the people were. I think that D20 was there and it was wonderful just to learn about all the amazing things that are happening in Colorado Springs, especially in that downtown area. I definitely learned uh, a lot of new things in, uh, from that. And then, uh, as uh, Will mentioned, and thank you, Will, uh, for your support and being there. It was great to have you. Uh, last week, the United Way, uh, just a real thank you to CEO Cindy Aubrey and her team. She hosted a meet and greet lunch, uh, and it really allowed me to introduce myself to Colorado Springs leaders, uh, business leaders, nonprofit leaders, and we also had some city council members there and county commissioners. 
uh, and not only was I able to share information about uh, our district and uh, introduction of, of me as a superintendent, but the best part was we had them in small groups and we started uh, the development of our portrait of a graduate. And some of the questions, every table, uh, we gave them 15 minutes to write down their ideas. And the questions were, what are your hopes and dreams for graduates? What skills are most important and why? What do these skills look like in action and what makes for a successful employee in your organization? And the feedback that we got was phenomenal. Um, they all got a little competitive with each other, which was really fun. They, they had a good time with it, but really the feedback was amazing and we'll be able to share that with you as we're going to be collecting feedback from all of our stakeholders, uh, but um, it was important to start with our business leaders. So that was uh, really great. And, uh, you know, it was really nice just to hear their hope in our students and that they just really want the students to be hopeful as they enter the workforce. And I think they're eager to partner with us in our efforts with Career Pathways and Career Academies. Uh, we had all of our uh, patron or all of our stakeholders meetings this week, uh, which included Patrons Council, a Coffee and Conversation, Superintendent Student Advisory Council, Parent Sounding Board, and our Teacher Communication count, uh, Council. So it was a busy uh, week this week, but really amazing. Great times to connect with folks. The three topics that we asked, uh, that we shared about, we, we also asked for their feedback each time uh, was around re the resource uh, uh, reallocation information, and Becky did a great job sharing that information asking feedback uh, so that they understand from uh, our stakeholder group you know where we would want to uh, spend money if we have any additional resources uh, we asked for feedback about our strategic plan and dr smith did a wonderful job of that and then jolyn and dr um, smith uh, show, shared some cmas data but most importantly how so what so we're collecting data we're looking at it but what do we do with it right what do we do with the data at a district level what we did, what do we do with it at a uh, building level? And then uh, our folks had a chance at their tables to actually use the actual data protocol that we use uh, so that they could experience uh, what uh, teachers do in their PLCs. And it was a great visit at Rampart uh, High School. Uh, up in the left-hand corner was the AVID class and they were doing some, um, some fun team building there on the lower left. Uh, corner, we just saw a video of him, uh, Greg Anderson, 39 years in uh, our D20. And here he's teaching pre-calculus, he does it part-time, uh, but just like we saw with the Eagle View students last, yet last time, right, where you guys are out there, Nicole and Heather were being brave and doing mathematical equations with the students, he was doing that with, their, with his students. And you can see they all knew, uh, they called it his dance and uh, but they knew about proportions and all kinds of really complex mathematical concepts by doing these whole body responses. So that was really fun. And then in the right hand side there was their forensics class and they were trying, it was a scene of a crime and the students were all trying to figure out, uh, they were drawing uh, 3D dimensional uh, up to scale drawings of the room so that they could best start looking at the clues. Mm -hmm. And they were all really busy like didn't even notice that we had uh, that Megan and I came in and that we went out. Um, I went to a homeschool academy, had a chance, and they had a we're having a field trip where I guess they go there on a regular basis at the Space Foundation uh, Discovery Center. And here they were uh, manipulating robots towards uh, styrofoam asteroids, uh, and they had to try to uh, steer around them. But then eventually they were going to try to launch, go straight at them, and break them apart. Uh, because that's in fact what uh, NASA does. They shoot um, robots or um, you know rockets at uh, asteroids and they break them into small pieces if they're headed towards Earth. And so they explained all of that as well. So it's really fun. Uh, so if we, I know we're kind of running long, but this, I, when I went to Air Force or Air Academy High School, I just had such a wonderful visit and I had a chance to talk to several students and I said, what do you like most about uh, Air Academy? What's the, um, what's your culture like? And every single student was so excited to tell me about their colors assembly. So this is two minutes long. Are you guys okay if I share that? So Dan said, well, I have to send you this video because it really um, shows uh, what they do. So can, uh, can somebody start that up for me? I don't think I can. Yeah, there we go.
colors of assembly. seniors, I'm assuming. I know. So, and and I really appreciate the, I know Air Academy is just creating these little videos to, to, to really celebrate their culture and what they do, but they all just couldn't stop telling me about this colors assembly. So, I appreciate that Dan sent that my way. All right, so I'm trying to go to the next one. There we are. I also, as uh, Heather, it's great to see you there and to spend some time with you. I went to the homecoming game and the marching band was phenomenal. Uh, and what a treat it was at homecoming or at the halftime to, to see the royalty. Uh, our junior ROTC did an amazing job presenting the colors. Uh, and then the marching band, and I was able to make it out of the stands before the blue powder was flown. So I saw the cloud, but I'm like, okay, this is the time to get out. So no, it was really fun. And, and just to see that positive culture was, was just so encouraging. And we talked about that. So then I also had a chance to go to the D20 transportation department. Well, um, it was uh, it was really fun. I have, you know, you guys drive by the Woodman, uh, see all those buses. I couldn't wait to go there. And um, our transportation director, Joey Eisenhut, and Brian uh, Vasira is the gentleman on the left. He's been there a long time. He started as a maintenance person, and now he trains uh, folks. And there were so many examples there of um, like fathers that were um, our mothers that were bus drivers and now their children were also learning to be bus drivers. He's trained several um, folks uh, not only to be in maintenance but to move up into leadership. They really have a strong grow your own program there. And uh, Joey and Brian just couldn't wait to show me their brand new buses and you can't see it in this picture but they're in front of their brand new bus. Uh, one brand new bus costs about $150,000 but uh, not only is there a stop sign on the front, but there's a stop, another one that comes out. So there's two that come out. The inside, yes, buses now have seatbelts, the newer ones. I said, how is that going? They said, well, the older students usually won't wear them because they're used to not having to wear them, but the younger students tend to want to wear it. But they said, you have to sit in the driver's seat. So I'm like, okay. And I couldn't resist the, the chance for a photo, and I just kind of wanted to start it up, you know, and, and try to drive around a little bit. They wouldn't let me do that. But what was cool is what they wanted to show me was they now they have like a 360 camera on those where they you can see all the way around the bus just like our backup ones that we have um, and they actually have a, their oldest bus has over 200,000 miles on it but it still runs really well they said it's still safe yeah so I learned a lot uh, from them and just really appreciated their time and uh, just want to uh, end with this Rampart High School's cross country uh, is also a need of kudos. They recently took home first place at the 5A Colorado Springs Metro League Tournament. Uh, the Rams were led by individual champion uh, Lila Pizzamenti. She led the team who finished the competition in the top four spots. And here is Lila crossing the finish line uh, with the team picture after the big win. So congratulations to them. And that's the end of my report. Thank you, Superintendent Heber. We need a motion to approve the following resolutions. Resolution 299-23, approval of matters relating to staff, specialist staff. Resolution 323, approval of matters relating to licensed staff teachers. 301-23, approval of matters relating to licensed staff, licensed support, slash special services provider. 
302-23 approval of matters relating to classified staff, 303-23 approval of matters amended district uh, of amended district accountability committee membership, resolutions 304-23 and 305-23, acceptance of annual monitoring report for executive limitation policy 2.2 treatment of parents and general public and Emory for the same. 30623 approval of language re revision to governance policy process 4.5 monitoring board governance process and board superintendent relationship approval of the board of education study session minutes from 21 September 2023 and approval of the board of education regular minute meeting, meeting minutes from 21 September 2023 so moved second roll call please Mrs Cloninger aye Mrs Cons aye Mr Lavalley aye Mr Salt Aye. Mr. Timby. Aye. We have 14 people who are uh, listening in. So there are no items pulled from the consent. The next is information items. Monitoring report for executive limitations policy 2.0 global executive constraint superintendent Haver. Yes, so um, this is uh, my EL oh, our, um, EL 2.0. So the executive limitation policy EL 2.0 um, is states that the superintendent shall not cause or allow any practice, activity, decision, or organiz organizational condition which is unlawful, imprudent, or in violation of the highest standards of educational and professional ethics. Uh, and interpretation uh, that the superintendent takes a district leadership role in reviewing and updating and enforcing district policies and practices and that violations of policies and procedures and practices will be promptly addressed and furthermore any unethical behavior and or practices will not be tolerated and as you can see in that um, EL there we have gone through several several policy uh, reviews and several since uh, my tenure as well and uh, in the data uh, section, at least from um, July 1st, some of the highlights, uh, we did ask the strategic plan uh, committee to add some more targets and measures in the strategic plan, and we'll be bringing that to you, the updated version uh, of our strategic plan in November. We're excited to show that to you. Um, and we'll have both long-term and short-term goals in that. Um, we are certainly uh, very much focused on academic achievement and academic growth, taking that whole child approach. Um, we are the four areas that um, I am really focusing on. I've asked cabinet members to focus on in their meetings to as kind of a through line through all of the K-12 and levels meetings include uh, special education, our professional learning communities, multi-tiered systems of support, which is just the triangle that I shared with you guys with the behavior and the academic side and our career pathways. Um, we've increased our membership uh, in both the Patrons Council as well as the Parent Sounding Board. Uh, we added the Coffee and Conversation session and a Principal uh, Council, Advisory Council. Uh, and one thing I'm really focusing on in all of those uh, stakeholder groups is creating those feedback loops, getting feedback, but then sharing back out what people had to share and what we're acting on as a result. And also added this year 290, or 92 90 minute visits in every school for the year, one 90 minute visit first semester and one second semester uh, with a real focus on instruction uh, and student learning. So those are the kind of the highlights and board any questions. I had no questions either. I'll just go through the MRE. Is the superintendent's interpretation of the policy reasonable? Is there sufficient evidence to determine compliance for each section? And by the way, Mr. Salt, if you want to say something, I, I just, I, I'm going to say just butt in. Is that probably the, just butt in? Uh, you, you get special dispensation tonight. Are all sections in compliance? Recognition of exemplary performance or concerns regarding performance. My only comment, I thought this was very thorough. I thought this was a very thorough MRA. So if we could, I, I'm seeing nods. So if we could just put that in there that I thought this was a very thorough uh, MR, uh, <coughs> not the MRA, very thorough uh, executive limitation uh, policy review um, mo report, monitoring report. That's what I was trying to say. All right, a preparation for next report cycle. Would you like to see additional different evidence or should any part of this policy be changed in the next monitoring report cycle? Do you see evidence which is extraneous and no longer necessary? Next one is monitoring report for executive limitations policy 2.3 treatment of staff, Superintendent Haber. Yes, I'd like for um, Cameron Smart to please our executive director of HR to please come to the podium. Good evening. 
Is this on? Yeah. OK. Uh, it's my pleasure to present to you the report for executive limitation 2.3 treatment of staff. Uh, which states with respect to treatment of paid and volunteer staff, the superintendent will not cause or allow conditions, procedures, actions, or decisions that are unclear, unfair, unsafe, untimely, undignified, or unresponsive. Uh, so the focus of these ELL is really around background checks that we do with uh, both employees uh, and volunteers, uh, personnel policies, steep, uh, staff treatment policy, um, staff complaints procedures, um, district committees, emergency situations, uh, all to ensure that staff are valued and supported. Uh, the monitoring period for this is September 16th, 2022 till September 15th, 2023. Uh, we find that the superintendent is compliant in all these areas. Um, so any questions as you've seen the report? So. I have no questions either. Uh, MRE, before I do this, I just want to just a 30 second briefing for those that may not understand what this is el executive limitation we have what's called a policy governance board uh, we basically run this district via policy and what we say to, to our superintendent superintendent haber we put guardrails and these are generally in the negative we you are not allowed to do this you are not allowed to allow paid staff or volunteer whose background checks fail to meet district standards to have unsupervised contact with students and once a year <coughs> excuse me the district comes to us and says, OK, here's our evidence. Here's our proof, if you will. It's ultimately Superintendent Haber that does that. That says, here's our proof that says that, yea, verily, we in fact believe we have abided by these executive limitations. That's what they did to us. We don't have a lot of questions because we've read this before uh, the last few days. And we, yep, this makes sense. We, we agree that this, in fact, is what is being done or more more appropriately what is not being done so this is a good news story that it's boring right um it doesn't mean that it's not important it's very important and we look at it we review it we study it but if we have no questions or everything seems to be in order we just proceed quickly so without further ado the mre go ahead mr salt yeah i just wanted to ask Ms. Haber. i know um, we first started talking about these DLs uh, a couple weeks ago well, a couple months ago now um i know that there was some uh, i won't say like confusion but it was a little bit different i was curious um not specifically related to this level while we're talking about it if you had any thoughts of how your comfort level was coming and looking at them and adjusting them to your thoughts and administration versus what you hear yeah i i appreciate that um director salt i appreciate the conversation that that we had uh, and with the board at the study session. So I'm just feeling really good about it, that we came to a good resolution of putting the asterisks there and you know, delineating here's what happened last year and then this year. So I feel like we're on a good track. Great, thank you. Yeah, the discussion that, that we as a board had, these executive limitations are monitored once a year, but they vary throughout the year and so really, is it fair to to hold Superintendent Haber accountable for something that happened before July 1st? No, it's not. And so we have a little asterisk by these now to say, no, uh, we need to monitor, look at it. Have we in fact abided by those those policies? For instance, some of these things are, are fire drills, for example. Okay, did we do the fire drills we're supposed to? If we didn't do it, okay, that's not on her watch, but it could be a problem that we still need to fix. So that's why we still need to monitor for the last year but we're not going to hold Superintendent Haber accountable for those things. OK, any other thoughts or questions? Uh, is the superintendent's interpretation of the policy reasonable? Is there sufficient evidence to determine compliance for each section? Are all sections in compliance? Recognition of exemplary performance or concerns regarding performance? Uh, next, uh, section two preparation for the next report cycle. Would you like to see additional different evidence or should any part of this policy be changed in the next monitoring report cycle? Do you see any evidence which is extraneous or no longer necessary? All right. Next is expulsion appeal. By the way, thank you, Mr. Smart. Forgot to say that. Um, expulsion appeal notification confidential report. State law requires the superintendent to report to the board at the next meeting of the Board of Education after an expulsion appeal hearing is conducted by a hearing officer. And that's from CRS 22-33-1052C. State law CRS 
Dash43DIII. The public records law also requires the Board of Education to comply with provisions of the Family Education Rights and Policy Act, Privacy Act, which protects the confidentiality of student discipline records. Therefore, the report by the superintendent on the status of expulsion appeals is confidential. Next up is the first quarter Board of Education discretionary budget update, Ms. Cloninger. Okay, <clears throat> so I think the easiest thing to do on this is it's all pretty self-explanatory except for we have a couple of um, items in red, so I'll just go ahead and address those. We added extra funds um, with the knowledge that we were putting on um, the MLO as well as a board re-election. Um, oh, did I see that? <laughs> yeah, a board election. I mean, all right, take it for what it is. Uh-huh. Anyway, um, so, so the number that we've gone over is 23,000. However, Ms. Um, Matson Bonet and uh, Mrs. Ms. Allen and I sat down and we were talking over that some of this, really all three of these are, well, the first two are very fluid because there's certain things that come in with elections, um, sometimes it will be a little bit more, a little bit less. We basically half of we have half of that um, one thirteen six eleven under the expenses on the number on the line three. We have paid half, and the other half is encumbered until we get, you know, the final tallies. So it could go up or down. So we kind of just left it in the red, and we'll take care of it when we get all of the final numbers. Um, the same with the election purchase services. That was something to um, put out something into the paper that just said we're having an election. If you'd like to come and um, run for the board, that's what that fee is for. But we may have other fees that come with that with upcoming um, board forums. And so all of this, I just thought, let's just leave it how it is and we'll take care of it Um after we have a final tally rather than move things around a bunch of times. Um, we certainly have money in the budget that we'll be able to still not go, you know, not go over what we have planned. Um, the final one is the board uh, memberships for and dues for CASB. Um, they went up a little bit, so the 1337 is a little bit higher. I personally suggest that we um, raise that for next year. However, um, when we were down in our CASB um, Region 6 meeting, um, we were I was speaking with um, one of the um, members there who said that they have, and I've talked to Mrs. Um, Matson Bonet about this, but um, and we'll have to find out more, but they were talking about that there could be new um, information on the, um, on the, sorry, it just left me, and the board docs, that the board docs, they've actually started implementing something called board notes, and it's something that they're starting to um, work with, and it's actually about a third of the cost. So actually that membership fee going up, I think could kind of, if we, anyway, it's just something to look at if that's something that is um, functional. I really kind of defer to, um, Tina and and Mary, who use that a lot, um, to you know, in your in your upcoming um, meetings and things, to kind of see if that's something that we want to go the route we want to go. Yeah, I looked at it. It looks pretty thorough and pretty great. But I think we'd have to do um, maybe they could let us test it, right, and see how it would work with our. And then we'd have to see what IT if it worked with right. Um, and it was something that was really, I mean, it was almost, it was almost a third of the cost. I mean, I think it was like around three or 4,000 versus the 12. Right, so, but it's also extremely important. You know, we use it. So Aaron's trying to say something. Yeah, so I was curious. So is it different from board docs, but like similar functionality? Is that what this is? Yeah, it's, I'll let Tina take that. Yeah, I looked at it. It has the same functionality of board docs. I would be curious to see how it works in a live meeting because something that board docs does in live meetings is help me take minutes and help me um, do when you guys vote. It helps me keep track of that pretty simply. Um, my other concern would be um, just 
having a history of everything. We have board docs uh, back to 2008. Everything is stored in there. Um, we'd have to get that out of board docs and saved in a file somewhere so we didn't lose that. That Those are my two big thoughts about it. So I'm going to jump in with some thoughts briefly. And, and these are not disqualifiers, but you should see, take a closer look. I'm going to I'm looking at Shelly, even though I'm not actually looking at Shelly right now. <laughs> Uh, so, the CASBE hosts policies for several districts within the state, and they actually had an issue back in March or April where their entire site was down for about three weeks. And so, all of those districts were then out of compliance with state um, statute where they had to have their policies available. Um, districts could not get on and access it either from an administrative side or from a consumer side. So we would want to make sure that there's some redundancy built into the their, their server side to make sure that their uptime is up because you know we have meetings coming up and you know our minutes go down for past meetings or current meetings that can be problematic. So just a, a word of caution with Casby's infrastructure recently having some, some shakiness to it. Uh, Again, not a disqualifier, but I just want to make sure that we're doing some due diligence. No, do I appreciate or document really So I appreciate that. I Jubal, who is the new executive director at CASB, was actually the one who it, I had been speaking with, and it it I'm sure it will be something that gets presented at the fall conference um, at in December that we go to, and that generally you and Mary go to a, a meeting during that time, and and that's one of the biggest. Yeah, pieces of your stuff, right? We go to the key people part. So if they're presenting at that, Mary and I will definitely go to that. Yeah, and I'm section. sure that they will. I just, mm -hmm. I it was just something that kind of came up, and I thought, absolutely, if we can save, you know, eight thousand ish dollars, that would be great. So my point in all that, and I'm not, if you have more to say, Eric, Mr. Salt, then let me know. But I'm good, thank you. Okay, um, that's. That's what's what about those red marks. So anyway, if you have any questions, let me know. A couple comments. I I want Ms. Matson Bonet to be intimately in that decision making process if if we decide. I I really value her opinion and, and if this is gonna put a big strain on her, um I'm in I'm disinclined to to do it. So yeah. Uh, and I was just thinking out loud, you know, the the number of school children in Colorado has been shrinking and except our numbers have been growing we, we didn't grow a couple of years and CASB charges per per student so I'm, I'm not surprised that even if they charge the same amount if they collect the same amount from the state we're gonna have to pay a slightly larger amount because we have a larger percentage of the students in the state because the state's shrinking and we're growing so it doesn't surprise me that that we're having to pay more I don't like it but but it makes sense we'll just make new buckets yeah, that's right. OK, thank you, Ms. Cloninger. Board of Education fall linkage. It, we we try to do linkages every fall and every spring as a board. And what does that mean? What is a linkage? Um, we have we talk with different groups of folks in our community, in our school district to try to get a sense of of what can we do better? What are we not doing? What are we doing? We shouldn't be doing. Um, we have met with uh, students who were English as a second language. We've met with military students and their parents. We have met with uh, random students, I recall, talking about COVID. So uh, we have met with just community. We actually, we tried to meet with community members, business leaders to say, uh, here's our graduates. You've seen them. What are we doing well? What could we improve on? Unfortunately, we, we just couldn't get people to come. So we are having a fall linkage. And what we are going to do in that fall linkage is continue to work on one of Superintendent Haber's initiatives is the um, uh, portrait of a graduate. What do we want to see out of our graduates? And we are going to invite the Superintendent Student Advisory Council. You know, sometimes we want random students, but we all sort of agreed that, that this one, um, we thought it would be a good a good choice to have the, the student advisory council. Don't know if they can all make it. And we're going to invite the parents of those children as well to come. So we get to, to have their input also. And that is going to be done in two weeks from this afternoon, I believe. 
So that is what we're going to do. That is the purpose of a linkage. And that's what we're going to do is, is try to focus and hone in on, on what do we what exactly do we want to have as a graduate, portrait of a graduate. And that's who we're going to invite. Board, any other thoughts, questions, comments? Well, I will say one of the gals in my DCC pictures is one of those that we'll be meeting with and was already super excited to come to it. So the kids are already planning. So I thought that was kind of fun. I think we feed them, do we not? Yeah, I think that's probably, I shouldn't say it. that's terrible. No, they're, they're, they're sharp kids. They're sharp young people. And, and, and I know that they, they enjoy coming. I, I, they're, it's a great group. All right. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll take it. Ms. Cortez, how many people have we signed, had to sign, how many people have signed up to speak during public comments section one tonight? In section one, we have one individual signed up. The board welcomes the comments of our community members. Speakers must sign up prior to 1 p.m. via an online form, and they must limit their remarks to two minutes or less. In deference to ASD 20 students, students will be allowed to speak first during the first public comment section. Following any students, speakers who wish to comment on an agenda item will be called in order of their sign up. We also ask speakers to address the board and not others in the room. All speakers will be notified of the remaining time via the mounted monitors behind the dais. When the time has ended, the microphone will turn off. Supplemental written materials can be given to the security guards and they will be delivered to the board secretary. Profanity or any disrespectful behavior will not be tolerated. We greatly value all comments from the public. However, the board will not respond this evening. Our first speaker this evening is Catherine Chukas. My name is Catherine Chukas. I live in the district. I'm an Air Academy parent, and my West Side Animal Update is about bears. Lots of bears around. Um, uh, per the agenda item about Executive Limitation Policy 2.0, I do have comments about that, but if I don't have time, I will fill out Ms. Elner, Elsner's form from yesterday and get my feedback in there. Um, because there's two items that just came up today that I just want to make sure that I'm covering. The 19th for your linkage with high school students, please keep in mind you did this on the same day as parent-teacher conferences. And a lot of our high school teachers don't do conferences on both days. They only do them in that evening. And so you kind of ask parents now, again, of great students, probably don't need to go for interventions, but you've now taken them that opportunity, or you, you made those parents' time constraints a lot harder on the 19th. So please think about that next time when you plan something with students is don't put it right on the same day as conferences. It's already hard enough for parents to get to conferences and then for them to get to an honor for them to be here with the board, like that's just hard. The second thing I wanna bring up again, as an Air Academy parent, today we had our SAC meeting. We did get a note from Megan Garland Evelo about some updates at the Air Force Base, and it was really on the teen center, and it was not about October 9th and 10th. And I do need to tell you that for Air Academy students, our PSAT National Merit Qualifying Exam will start at 7.30 a.m. on the 9th and the 10th. Again, we had three people this year recognized, but now you're saying that the buses are gonna have a delay so they can't get there by 7.30. So I think you're saying to Ms. Walhoff, who's running the test, is that they need to figure out an alternate way of a transportation from their parents to get there so that they are there in their seats by 7.30 to take the National Merit Qualifying Exam. My child is one of those. And so this is obviously now you've put a, a burden on us. The sun doesn't even come up until 7 a.m. And so now we're going to have to get our kids and hopefully drop them off in front of the high school at 7 a.m. So we can get back to drop our other kids off. Um, because again, Air Academy parents really rely on the bus, um, probably more so than any other high school. It's a long way. Ms. Lucas, if I may, send no, send that, send that to um, Superintendent Haber, would you please? I know it is, so please send it to her. Thank you. Um, okay, there are once again there are no action items scheduled for this meeting, so we're going to roll right into section two. Um, Ms. Cortez, how many people have signed up to speak during public comment section two? We have one individual signed up for section two. Okay, during this portion of public comment, speakers who are speaking on non-agenda topics, general public comment will be called to speak in order of their sign-up. If a speaker does not indicate the topic on which they intend to speak, then they will follow in order of their sign-up time those speakers who have indicated a specific general topic on which they will be communicating. The second public comment section will be limited to 60 minutes. Our speaker in section 60. two, oh, sorry, our speaker in section two is Robin Lamaru. I hope Robin, I got your last name right. Excellent.
Good evening. My name is Robin Lamoureux. I live in the district and I am a 2019 graduate of Rampart High School and graduated from the ASD 20 Bridges program in 2022. I'm here today in support of the ASD 20 Gay Straight Alliances or GSAs for short regarding recent policy changes that now exclude GSAs from being school sponsored clubs. For those who don't know, GSAs are student led organizations that provide an essential safe space for LGBTQ plus students and their allies to come together and advocate for a safe school climate to provide education about LGBTQ plus topics, decrease bullying, and to provide a safe space for students to have fun, socialize, and be themselves. I attended the GSA weekly for all four years of high school and regularly requested and petitioned for the GSA to be a school sponsored club, even after being denied over and over. After years of hard work and perseverance, the GSA was finally instated as a, an official school sponsored club not only at Rampart, but at all ASD 20 schools that have them the year after I graduated. Legacy. What is a legacy? It's planting seeds in a garden you never get to see. Hamilton, an American mu musical. <laughs> I never got to benefit from a school sponsored GSA, but the students who came after me did, and that meant everything was worth it. So you can imagine that I am, to say the least, a little miffed uh, to see my and other former club members hard work undone, undermined, and unappreciated. GSAs are no longer school sponsored for the exact same reason they weren't before. They are not curricular, and so they cannot be school sponsored. I argued then and do now that they are curricular. GSAs involve politics, history, <coughs> health education, and leadership building skills. But more than that, even if GSAs were not curricular, they should still be school sponsored. Allocating funding into student organizations that increase well-being, mental health, positive social outcomes, and academic performance of LGBTQ plus students is a worthy cause in and of itself. I implore ASD 20 to reinstate school sponsorship to all. Debrief. Superintendent Haber, do you have any clarifications or next steps? No, I do not. Happy birthday to Bob Carpenter and IT on October 26th and Cameron Smart on October 29th. Happy birthday. <laughs> Question six from the CASB self-assessment. Did the board focus on its word policy guidance goals and not operations? I think we did. Was our business this evening focused on activities that promote and honor our mission statement, our belief statements, and our global end statement that reminds us that all students will have the knowledge, skills, and character necessary for successful transition to the next level and upon graduation be fully prepared for success? This meeting is adjourned. Six attendees. <laughs>